Let's take a look at how to handle user reactions in a Discord bot written with Go. All right, so last week's video where we working with the Planet Scale database was originally going to be the last video in the series about how to build Discord bots with Go. Um, however, shout out to Marsborn on that video for suggesting that I do another one on how to handle reactions because it's a fairly common operation like functionality that you would use inside Discord bots. So it really piqued my interest and it made me kind of want to explore how to do that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so far, we've added a single handler. If I scroll down a little bit inside the code, there is this uh, on line 68, there is this session dot add handler. And this accepts a function that has a signature of the discord go session, followed by discord go dot message create. And this message create is actually the event that gets that comes in. It's a struct that holds the event that comes in whenever a message is created. However, we can actually add multiple uh, different kinds of handlers in here as well. So for instance, if I add sesh .add handler, and then we're going to pass in another function that is going to take in the session. The session I've noticed is the, the common thing across all these. So discord go dot session. And then the next thing we're going to pass in is actually the reaction. And if I add a reference to discord go dot add re uh, sorry, uh, message reaction add. This is the, um, I guess, the signature of the function that will handle any incoming reactions that are added to any message. So let's come in here and log out any reactions that we get added to messages within our Discord server. So I'm going to say uh, log.println. I guess we could do printf. Um, let's see here. Uh, percent %v, percent %v reacted with percent %v again. So this is going to be like a string.format. Um, and we'll type in r.userid. Whoops, not all that stuff user ID for the first one, and then we'll do r.emoji.name for the second uh, parameter here. So I'm going to save that, and then we're going to start the bot up. So I'll do go run main and let this fire up, and then we're going to hop over to Discord once this does fire up, and then we're going to log. We're just going to add a reaction to one of the messages in here, and then we'll see what happens in this log line right here. Okay, so I'm inside our test Discord server that we've been working with, and I have a new channel here called Reactions. So I'm just gonna say test message because we need some message to kind of react with. And then I'm gonna right click this, and then I often like using the fire emoji. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the fire emoji. And let's head back to VS Code and see that we're actually getting some kind of response back from adding a reaction to a message. All right, inside of VS Code, in our, alt, our terminal down here, we can see that my user ID reacted with a fire emoji. So this is definitely working using this new session handler we just added here. Now, one common thing I've seen in a lot of Discord bots is granting roles based on reactions to a message. So let's do something similar. Okay, so let's get rid of all of this stuff we have here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add a role to my user count based on if the emoji is this fire emoji. So I'll say if r.emoji.name is equal to, and then I'm gonna put a literal emoji of fire in here, just like that. Then we're gonna do something with it. So we'll say s.guild member role add, and then pass in r.guild ID is the first thing we need to pass in, r.user ID is the second. And then finally, we need to pass in the role name itself. So the way you would typically get this is if you have Discord developer mode enabled, you right click on the role name and then select copy ID. I already have a fire role set up with the ID uh, copied off here, so I'm just gonna paste that ID in here. Now let's also send a message to the original channel just to say that, hey, the user's been added to this specific role. So I'll say s.channel message send, and then we're gonna pass in the channel ID just like we have been for the majority of this series, and then I'll say fmt.sprintf, and then we're gonna basically add a very similar text to what we just uh, we just put in here. So I'll say percent V has been added to percent V. And then for these two parameters here, we'll say r.user ID. We'll say r.emoji.name. Like that, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do in order to like kinda complete the circle on this is we're going to add another handler in here except the signature for the function that we're gonna do here is uh, message reaction remove. So this will handle the logic if we need to actually remove the user from the message. So a lot of times in these bots, you'll see like if, if, if a user um, clicks the reaction to add themselves to a role, then they also have the option where if they, un they, they click it again to essentially remove their reaction from the, that message itself, it will remove them from this role. So we don't have to change actually a ton with this too. We still wanna check to make sure the emoji name is this fire. 
And then instead of guild member role add, we want to do guild member role remove like that. So this line here is going to remove the, the user from the role. And then we're just going to update this text and say has been removed from the fire emoji. OK, so now that this saved, I'm going to actually restart our bot here. Control C to restart it. We're going to run it again. Wait for the message that says the bots online. And let's head over to Discord and test this out. OK, so we're back in Discord and then we'll put something in here and say like this is the reaction role message like that, just to give myself something new here. And then if I right click on this and click fire, you can see my uh, my username has been added. This has been given like this orange color to it. And that's just because that's the fire role. If I click on here, you could see the roles in here. I've got the fire role that's been assigned to me right here, right? And it also drops that message that says my user ID has been added to the fire apparently. And then if I uncheck this reaction here, you'll see my username goes back to the white color, which means the role has been removed and it drops this message. Now, typically you could set up logic uh, along with this where you can um, you can combine some of the lessons we've learned previously in the series where you're asking the user questions and then log in their feedback. You could use that to craft a message and then log the message ID from that message that was created in order to like um, to somehow set your code up to monitor a very specific message, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. If you've watched the entire series, you should be equipped with the knowledge to pull something like that off. But drop a comment in this video and let me know if that's something maybe we should explore. Maybe we'll make an entire video that's just dedicated towards how to build this very specific bot to to add reaction roles to a Discord channel. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding how to handle user reactions with a Go Discord bot. Have you built Discord bots with any other language? Do me a favor and leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the experience with that language. If you enjoyed this content, you might also like my video on how to query GraphQL APIs written in Go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.